we're recording. So yeah, this is the 18th year of the Guitar Fest. That's really hard yeah. to believe. That is yeah. hard to believe. Maybe. As you Remember? said in 2007, we you started it in your living room, or 2006, you started it in your living room. Well, we we we, we dreamt it up there, right? And then we and then we went and did it in 10 days. We had everything done. Well, you, you, you did the first flyer. We had all the artists, and we had like some of the best. It was like one of the best best crews we ever had because at that time Peter Rowe was alive, and he did that Indian music thing. Right. We had we had. Uh, I think we had Grisha and Grisha's father both somehow involved. And we had Christoph Wolf. He was a chairman at Harvard. Yeah. Remember, we had the Borromeo. This is the only time I ever was able to get the Borromeo Quartet to play with me. <laughs> yeah, we, we even did. Uh, this is the first year of the Guitar Fest. So we were at uh, Museum of Fine Arts. We did that lute uh, harpsichord exhibition. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, then, and then you not only ran the festival, you won the first prize in the contest. That's never been done before or since by anybody. I don't that recommend was a world it. record. That was amazing. I I think I went on stage with the feeling that I had nothing to lose. So. Yeah, and, and you you were just relaxed and played great, and everybody said, "Oh, I love this guy. He's wonderful." And then remember, we had that we had General General Vince doing the right. CDs. Yeah, right? yeah, he was so good. And actually, right, Joe, who won who won the first prize with you, he yeah. went on to great things. He runs Austin Classical Guitar Society now, or amongst other things that he does, and composing and everything. So. Yeah, yeah. It's an amazing, that was an amazing time, it really was. Yeah. It was, yeah. And it, it was the, the sort of the history of Boston Guitar Fest was really about, uh, one day I walked into your, to our lesson and then you, you essentially recruited me to to help right, you with the guitar Steve, fest. you're doing this. That's right. <laughs> you have a new assignment. Yeah, right. That was my lesson for the day. Yeah, that but, was it, yeah. It was Bach and a, and a guitar festival. Something right. Like that. Yeah. yeah, something like that or something, yeah. 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 So Elliot, the last time we spoke, um, I started with a little uh, excerpt from Segovia's autobiography. Oh yeah. And in the autobiography, and I think it was in the prologue, uh, Segovia was sort of reminiscing very kind of romantically, I think, about what oh. his children and what his spiritual children would end up doing in the guitar world in the future. Yeah. yeah. And I was thinking that this might be a good place to sort of follow along. You know, of mm -hmm. course, we know that Segovia left a huge legacy, not just you and yeah. Oscar and all these other people. Mm -hmm. But this, I think, in a way, this brings us to Bruce. And yeah. I'll, I'll let you have it from here. So, yeah, Bruce. Oh, man. 55 years, 55 years we were together. Yeah. Even if we weren't in touch, you know, for, for, for months sometimes at a time or sometimes, I don't know, maybe even a year or something when I was over in Europe or something. We were we were always in touch, really. And uh, um. I think I think we brought Bruce that first year to Guitar Fest, and we must have. We must we did. have. Yep. Yeah. He was That's he right. was in the jury. Uh, he also did master classes. Right, right. So I mean, it's just yeah. I mean, Bruce. I, I you know, I got I was I was in. We were in exam mode, and you know, end of end of semester mode at uh, NEC was uh, the third of May, <laughs> Tuesday, and Adam Holzman calls me. Adam, first of all, Adam never calls me. And Adam called me at two in the, in the afternoon. And he was, he was, I didn't know, but he was at the airport going, you know, about to travel to Tallahassee and see Bruce and, and Michelle and everything. And, uh, and, I, and I, somehow I just, I, I, I said, I said, I, Adam, I'll call you back in three minutes. I'm just seeing a student out the door. And he said, it's important. And I, and I just knew, I said, something happened to Bruce. Mm -hmm. And I said, so, so I, to myself, I was walking up the stairs and I got the, the call from him. And I said something, you know, I knew it. And he told me, and, and it, was, it was just complete incredulity. You know, I couldn't, couldn't even imagine it. And, uh, you know, I still can't imagine it. You know, it's like I can't pick up the phone and call him anymore. Yeah. And, uh, boy, it really, I, I, I just, I said, I feel like a shark took a, a, a sideways bite out of my rib cage or something. You know, it's just a missing a missing part of my being that's that's gone, and uh, I mean, it, some you know, some people okay, you know, like when Segovia passed away, it was ninety four. You know, okay, I mean, it, I mean it, in, in a way, we we thought okay, he'll he'll keep going forever, and and in another way, rationally, you know, okay, you know, that was, he's had his full life as anybody could have possibly had, and of course, it's you know, you're very very sad when you lose any anybody that's that huge, and you're in your you know in your own spiritual universe but okay you could okay that was okay 94 years he did everything and there's nothing you know, really he didn't have to prove it yet, you know i mean sure sure he would have been happy to live another 94 years but you know he really got it he got it all done in, in the most amazing way and it's hard to think of a more fulfilled life than than his 
but Bruce, I mean, Bruce had so many, so many good years left, you know, and, and it's just, I mean, the, the, the universal outpouring, even, even in a community that can be sometimes, you know, fractious, like, the, I mean, we, we are, we're a big guitar family, but it doesn't mean all the family members always get together, get along with one or another, you know, but Bruce was a figure who was so universal and so, so bigger than life. And just, 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 he just had a, an automatic kind of moral authority. And even though Bruce was like four or five years older than me, but I always felt like he was almost like a second parent. And I think he, a lot of people felt that even people that were near, near to his age as I was, as I was, you know, with, you know, he was like always, he was everybody's big brother and, and, uh, you know, guardian angel and everything. And he, you know, he was always calm, you know, no matter how been out of shape you, you might be, he would, he would listen, you know, he'd listen and listen and listen. And then he'd say one sentence and you'd be all set. <laughs> That was Bruce. You know, you knew him also so well. So you know how he was. And and so now uh the only thing I could think to do spontaneously was to de immediately dedicate the festival to him. And uh we'll be looking towards once we consult with the family, we'll be looking towards a way to make a more kind of a you know permanent part of the some some niche in the festival that's a permanent homage to bruce because he he i think he missed only one guitar festival when, one time when when his uh when his father was was not well and both he and adam had to had to postpone but that's that's the only that's the only time he missed any guitar fest outside of covid naturally you know and we were just going to bring him back we were just going to bring him back this year you know finally in person and we we are our, our best our best hotel possibility was all set up for him and and you know, we were really 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 looking forward to having him with us and then and then this. So anyway, I have to go on. That's it. That's all yeah. I, you know, I've been, because you're the one that sort of uh, like, you're, you're, you're the one that when, when all of this happened, uh, you, you weren't sort of, I felt that you weren't very happy with the, the overall coverage. And no. You must have had, so I felt at the time that you must have had something more to say. Um, and, and there are a lot of themes here. So I want to, I want to start with this one. Cause you, you mentioned a few interesting things about, Sure. You said Bruce said one thing, and he yeah. was always very calm, and right. and he was a great listener. Yeah. So, yeah. Um. So this comes to us. This I'm gonna play this little clip, and it comes to us by way of Tony Morris from Classical Guitar Live. Oh. He says hi. Yeah. Uh. Here's a little clip uh, of uh, someone you know pretty well, and uh, I'll share a screen, and I'll try not to mess this up. Okay. Yeah. And um, we'll have a quick listen. So okay. I have uh, Tony's permission to use this. Okay. Bruce was both my first and last teacher. He was my teacher from the time I was seven till 12. And then when I came to Florida State in 1979, and so Bruce was both the beginning of my work and in a lot of ways, the end of my active sort of every week teacher work, you know? It's funny because when I was younger, Bruce was always my greatest support system. And really throughout my life, he has been. But when I studied with him, he was hard on me. and. Uh, he was very honest and you know, your tone sounds like crap today or what's wrong with your nails? They sound like you did them on the sidewalk or um, do you own a metronome? It would be nice if you used it um, or he would blow cigars. In the old days, he used to smoke cigars. He doesn't anymore really, but he was a, he's a connoisseur of cigars, my brother. And so he would blow, as I was playing, he'd blow smoke in my face. And one time I said to him, I can't play if you blow smoke in my face. And he said, and I quote, you can't play whether I blow smoke in your face or not. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I got both ends of the barrel, you know, but uh, Bruce was an amazing foundational teacher, which he was not only for me, but for so many guitarists. I mean, and I always say this about Bruce is he's the greatest listener I've ever met in in many ways that's i think his greatest skill is his both his meticulousness in his listening and his ability to listen and then make recommendations to improve what he's hearing you know and if anything that's what a music teacher has to be able to do and then put it into words as to what to do what um what adam actually told me is the first thing bruce said in the first day of florida state was mom isn't here right now <laughs> Mom's not here, so get ready for boot camp, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Adam, and it's just always the way Adam has described things to me as well, exactly the same way, you know, with the 
with with Bruce, you know that. But I actually I have not I did not witness Bruce teaching all that much. Mm -hmm. Um, I I was more aware, you know. I mean, he was he was incredibly gentle, I guess, with me. After you know, after the first years, first years he was tough, but then then you know he was just so incredibly supportive and gentle and. In, in 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 everything you know in, in in when i'd have my various life crises as well he'd he'd just always be there and he'd just kind of listen he had that ability to listen and that photo that i sent to you that really expresses our 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 relationship you know we we just um, there was just this this uh you know this field field of energy that that went between us and and yeah that's it that's it. That's like 1976. That's Tallahassee, 1976, right before a concert. He invited me down there to play two, three, four years in a row in the in the, in the mid to late 70s. And I'd go down and we'd we'd hang out and you know, all the stories about Bruce. You know how 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 you know when when especially as Tallahassee is like famous for like the, these downpours. And I remember he 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 you know he always had his car just so. In fact, everything about Bruce was always perfectly prepared. You know he was. When he got up in the morning, the way he did his hair, the way everything was just perfectly set up, you know, there was nothing left to chance. And and I remember him being being he he'd be in his car and he'd open the door and then he'd lean an lean an umbrella out the window and open the push the button on the umbrella and the umbrella would go up and so he could you know get out of the car perfectly amidst the Tallahassee downpours. I remember him doing that a lot. Yeah, yeah. So, how much of the Bronx was in him? Oh, a lot, you know, especially <laughs> that accent. I mean, he he never, you know, his accent never, never disappeared. No matter how long he lived in the South, he never, you know, and never touched him. And, and, you know, his, 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 his eternal roommate, Tom Johnson was always, was always, always, you know, always, you know, cutting him to, into him for that, for that, that, that Bronx accent that he had. Yeah. And I remember one time, um, I knew Bruce's parents well. I knew the whole well. I didn't know Greg very well, but because he was basically not not around all that much. But I knew, of course, Adam forever and 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 Bruce forever. And I remember one time they were they were they very generously invited me to eat out with the entire family. There was a restaurant called Spain, which was had fan, especially fantastic seafood and you know this wonderful green Spanish green sauce with the garlic and everything. And we were sitting around the table and 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 you know and 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 Bruce and Adam. I mean. The, the the you know their father was just was it's just just Adam is had a Adam is very garrulous in the way his father was the, the father was was much more like Adam than like like Bruce you know Bruce's was more restrained but Adam's very garrulous very very sociable very you know very um lots of laughter and 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 you know and the father was very much like very much like uh much like like Adam so so his name was David and so David Holzman says to me, he said, boy, they gave you, they, they gave you the ultimate insult here. They said, they said, you look like one of us. I remember him saying that. You know, a real, real sense, wonderful sense of humor. Yeah, yeah I like that. I, I think uh, the one of the things I miss about being on the East Coast is that sense of humor. I think California's yeah. got a kind of a different... No, California's its own headspace. That's a whole different thing. Okay. The other thing about California that's so interesting is everybody who lives in California thinks that whatever time it is in California, that's the time it is every place else on Earth. So they say five o'clock. It doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't have any... They don't, they don't even think about your time zone. Nobody I know who lives in California is capable of that. They cannot add up time zone differences. It's five o'clock. Okay, it's, that means it's California time, five o'clock. And, and, and wherever you are, you're also on at five o'clock, you know, even if you might not be. Well, maybe in Silicon Valley might be a bit different. We had all all kinds of yeah. immigrants here, you yeah, know, and people working. But anyways, yeah, I know what you mean. But 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 my friends in California are all like that. They, they, you know, they 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 do not. They do not. Even my daughter who lives in San Francisco now, I mean, she doesn't she doesn't think about you know time zone either. It's you know if if she tells you know call me at one o'clock, it's it's not it's not East East Coast time anymore. It's just you know California time, whatever. So yeah. Now you mentioned something earlier about Bruce sort of being above the kind of the what sort of territorial fray that can be right. characteristic yeah. of our of our yeah. yeah. Um, so here, I think that brings us nicely to another little theme here. So let me play this for you. Okay. And uh, this is Steve Robinson. Oh uh, yeah. Because underneath all of that <laughs> is a really, really kind, gentle, and very, very caring person. 
And I think for all of us that have been a part of this program, um, Bruce has created a home for us here. This is coming home. So I'd like to play a little piece, a fairly new piece by Andrew York entitled Home. For you, Bruce and Michelle. I think this was at Stetson, right? Uh, when we were all down there at Stetson there, and there was a an homage to Bruce. I, I think that was the year I was there. I, I'm almost sure I remember Steve, you know, doing doing that. Um, yeah, yeah. This one says uh, Florida Guitar Festival and Competition. Okay, no, it was not that. It was yeah. a different, different yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah, that's great that you found all these clips. That's very cool. You know, it's not easy to find. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I mean, unless people, maybe people have started to post this stuff, but I don't think so. You must have found it. Uh, yeah. I, uh, I mean, there's a sort of a side topic, which is uh, we we brushed on it, but but it's kind of difficult to find Oscars stuff too, Oscar Gilia stuff. Amazing, yeah. Just, yeah. And and the so thing is... Yeah. That it's Italian, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's true. Well, you know, so so my relationship with Bruce has kind of actually been been just very small bits. And I would say, you know, even though I, I never studied with Bruce, I, the most I ever, the closest I ever got to Florida State was I auditioned there for my doctorate. Right. And I ended up choosing you. Right. Um, there was too much of Boston that drew me back. Right. right. Um, but when I went to Siena to study with Oscar, there were always uh, guys from the Adam, the, the Adam and Bruce. And, sure studios if not both you know if sure. not studied with both yeah and so to sort of prepare for for our little conversation today i did reach out to a bunch of people and mm -hmm. you know again on that theme of of what steve robinson just said about home or you yeah. know it's a lot of people just came out and and sent me some really really cool pictures so nice. why don't we take a look yeah, at some I'm, of I'm very excited to see these yeah okay all right so uh again i don't want to mess this up let's see if i can do this properly I don't know what the best way is to do this, but let's try this. Okay. So let's start from our backyard. Uh, this is uh, 2007. Hmm. This is during guitar. Oh, yeah. Yeah, is, I know. Yeah, yeah. Shot. yeah. So this is the back of Williams Hall, the old Williams Hall. Yeah. At New England Conservatory. And uh, I, I was, I'm trying to think about which event this was. This was um, the sixth which was the second day of the festival or the first full day of the festival but this was year two and the year two is the year the festival almost went under remember we had such a hard time and then finally in the last minute we pulled it uh, as often happens with the guitar fest, we kind of pulled it out of the fire so the theme was latin america and and maybe this these were the guys when we had slain slain we can this uh son harocho group come up from mexico so telehu kani they played in jordan hall my yeah. my feeling, my guess is that this was um, Achilles Baez, the Venezuelan guitarist. That could be. Yeah, because I because I know Talen Hukani was playing in in Jordan Hall. I know Dan Benelli actually played in Williams Hall. That's but, right, Benelli played. Maybe it was that. I don't know. But I don't think Dan Benelli was on the first full day of the festival. No. So my. I, and I can't find the programs, but anyway, this this is some this is a random picture that I I guess I happened to get, but. You know, ah, it's quite yeah. joyful. It is great. Yeah, me yeah. too. Yeah, great. yeah. So let's see what else we have here. Okay, so this is also from Oslo oh, Guitar Fest. And Joaquin. Right. And the reason why these Rene Izquierdo and, and Joaquin Clerch, the reason why they're here is because if you go around the table, you'll see. <laughs> yeah. Apostolos and, and, and Michelle and Bruce. That's so. That's a great picture of Michelle and Bruce. That's yeah. Great. Yeah, and then yeah. if we just keep panning around the table, and uh, by the way, this is right outside NEC. This is uh, used to be Pizza Uno, right, which is now a bank. <laughs> I'm so, well, so much for hanging out there anymore. Uh, we could no. try, uh, and then if we pan around just a little bit more, we'll have John Derby, and we have that's oh, yeah. Isaac Bustos uh, laughing in his beer. Right, yeah. and I don't know who the the guy in the side is. That's he great. looks a little bit like Scott Bork, but I don't think it's Scott Bork. No, no it's not Scott. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it is. Yeah, but um, John Derby. So, so uh, yeah, yeah. So, speaking of John Derby, um, let's go to John Derby. He was he was somebody I reached out to. Yeah. To get some photos. So John Derby, he's doing pretty well. I think he's in uh, Utah, Southern Utah. I think. Yeah. Adjunct professor. I've never him in a while, but it would be great to to see him again. Yeah. Oh, who's John? Wow. Right. So John, <laughs> John said, uh, "Let me let me make sure I don't get this wrong." 
John said this. This was at uh, Boston Guitar Fest 2009, he thinks. And these are Dave Tronzo's guitars after oh, his concert right. in the chapel. Right. And, right, at uh, the Northeastern. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, okay. And I asked John what they were doing, and John says, we were probably discussing where to go for dinner or how coffee, <laughs> how, right. how the coffee is. <laughs> so Coffee for brews, that was the fuel of life, that's for sure, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh look at that. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's when we had Tom and Bruce in the jury, mm. and Oscar Rone, yeah, and Adam and John. Wow, wow. And the gentleman on the far right is uh... Tom Johnson. Oh, then with the with the pigtail is that Tal Hurwitz? Oh, that is Tal Hurwitz. Yeah, that's right. And that's Tom Johnson, right? Yeah. This is this is Saint Paul Hall, right? That is Pierce Hall. Oh, it's Pierce it. Hall. Okay, I've never that's been in great picture place. though. Yeah, yeah. So this is from John Irby again. It's like, I mean, he really came through with these cool photos. Wow, that's pretty great. That's yeah. pretty great. That's a great photo. Yeah. It is, yeah. Yeah. So, okay, let's keep going. <laughs> so John came up with this. Uh, this is the one I was looking for. Who had this? John Irby had this one. I was looking for this one. You got to send this to me. This, this, this is in my parents' house in Atlanta. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, shout out oh, to John Irby. God, I can't believe he has that. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> how he would have that? That is that's a, that's a, you know Bruce is telling me, you know, what to do. <laughs> well, what do you mean? <laughs> Say a little more. He's giving me life advice. You could tell that, and you know, I'm listening to him. Yeah. He's, he's he's you know gesturing with his hands. He's giving me life advice. Yeah. Okay. I this think... cool belt there. That's very funny. I th I think I haven't really asked you for life look... advice yet. But, I was okay. looking for this picture. I know I've got it. I think it's in my house in, in Granada. I think it's in Spain. I mm -hmm. know I have it somewhere. I couldn't find it. Yeah. So you got to send this to me. When we're, yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah, absolutely. Well, John Yerby, thank you very much. I can't believe John had this. Why would John have had this? I don't know how, how or why John would have had this. That's John so John Yerby, leave a comment. Why? <laughs> then we'll, we'll know why. Yeah, leave a comment I, I, below. I've never given it to him. I must have given it to him. But, it does, you know, I don't. Yeah. Well, wow, that's great. Good to have remote backup, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that's John Nerby. Um, let me go to my first teacher uh, from, from uh, in the United States. So I, I, I started learning guitar when I was in Taiwan when I was 14. Wow, and uh, so I came to the U.S. I had no information. This was in the 90s, right? So Napster was my best bet to finding out who was playing guitar and what they were playing. Um, but anyways, I came. No. I'm sorry? What was your best bet to, for, to finding out? Napster to, to pirate. Napster. Oh my God! Yeah, the yeah. Napster. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a blast from the past. Right. So to pirate music. Not that I ever found anything on Napster for classical guitar, but anyways, it was like a information void, you know, out there in Taiwan. Like the closest I ever got to hearing Julian Bream live was the promise of him coming to con uh, Taiwan, Taipei, to give a concert, but him canceling a couple months out was the closest. So. Anyways, I, uh, I came to the U.S., um, uh, I emailed the Guitar Foundation of America at the time, and, and I said, hey, where are some good schools in California? And they gave me USC, Northridge, and Fullerton. And uh, I just looked at the map, and I saw Northridge was closer to the ocean beach, and I decided to pick Northridge. Wow. And that's where I studied with Ron Borzon, who's on the left, far left. I, and there's Chap Delane. And is that Steve in the middle? Steve that Robinson. is Steve Robinson in the middle, yeah. And Bruce. Yeah. So this is Stetson, uh, 2001, and uh, Ron Borazon, right? The the guy on the far left. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. He, he was Ron my first. Well. Yeah, he was my first teacher. Very of course, cool. Elliot, he says hi. Yeah. Um, this was this this was actually a cool year for me because this was the year that Ron Ron signed me up to play for Oscar. So that was the first time I played for Oscar. All I had heard was stories of him throwing pencils and stuff at people, and that's, um, that's, that's on, on and when he was on good behavior. That's, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, Ron uh, Borzon, he sort of cautioned me and said, you know, he'll probably only let you play one chord, maybe two. And uh, after the lesson with Oscar, Ron asked me uh, how many chords did I play? And I said, he, Oscar actually let me play the whole piece. Wow. And uh -huh. Oscar uh, and Oscar picked me to play in the uh, the student recital. Very cool. Yeah. And is that Stetson? He came that's Stetson 2001. Yeah. We were at Stetson the last year of it, yeah. and Oscar was there that year as well. 
because Steve, Steve and, and 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 Patrice, they did that thing. They did it for like 17 years, and then and then the school just just wasn't supporting them. They say, you know, we've just been killing ourselves. You know, we just can't do it anymore. I I don't think they, I don't think they've done done anything like that since. But yeah, they did it for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, and I have to thank Steve a lot because uh, he came out to Northridge to give a master class. And mm -hmm. one lesson I'll never forget, he said, your fingers are either working with each other or they're working against each other. <laughs> and I'll never forget that. And yeah, you know, well, he, he certainly got it going, <laughs> working together, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I think he has another photo that Ron sent me. Oh, that's really nice. That's uh, from uh, Bruce's office in Tallahassee. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, I, like I said, I, I never really, I, I, I played for Bruce in the audition. I played for him in a master class a small handful of times, maybe no more than three times. So my direct contact with Bruce was never quite consistent, was never substantial. But because of Ron Borzon, because of people like um, all the students who studied with Oscar, and therefore I sort of, by osmosis, I guess, I just had a lot of Bruce around me and Adam yeah. as well. Sure. So, yeah. Wow. Let's keep going. Oh, God, you've really done your research. This hey, hey, that's, I'm just writing emails to a bunch of people. Let's do, um, uh, let's do this one. This one from uh, Andrew Zone. Okay. Here's a nice one. Oh. Yeah. Look at that. So this is what Andrew said. Andrew said, uh, October 5th, 2017, he said, I was in Tallahassee for the Florida Guitar Fest, which usually happens in October. So we went to dinner. I took... Um, I took degrees from both Adam and Bruce, so both are very dear to my heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. That's the, 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 some of these photos are really, really get Bruce's character. That's that's a really, it's a really, yeah, good shot of of everybody. Actually, it's amazing. I would say anybody who's ever taken a lesson with Bruce knows that face, that expression yeah. quite well. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. 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 So. Uh, and, and, you know, speaking of that sort of Bruce satellite, I mean, Andrew was another one because uh, the year, the, 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 the month right before I went to Siena, I was in Imperia. Uh, you know, you know this one, but, but yeah. uh, this was um, Andrew Zone, uh, Todd, uh, oh man, I can't remember his last name, uh, American guitarist in Tennessee, I think. Todd something. And, and Matteo Mela and Lorenzo Michele, they, they, they built this festival in Imperia. Imperia, yeah, I was in Imperia a couple of times. Yeah. That's right, right. Um, or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. So, anyways, like just just more, you know, I guess Bruce second degree, you know, for, for me. Right. Yeah. yeah. Let's go to uh, let's go to Scott Tennant. Oh. Yeah, but not Scott, because because I'll explain. Okay. That's John Deerman. Oh sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I did write Scott Tennant, uh, and here's, <laughs> here's what Scott said. I was looking through my picks for the same, for some reason, just to look back on some memories, but I only have this one. It's with John Dearman at Iserloan 2016. Oh yeah. Is it alone? No. Yeah. 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 John visited us in, uh, kind of another last, last, I think it was last summer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's Bruce. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's quite um I, I would say for my part, because I, I, I see myself as the student in, in all of this, right? I, I took lessons from Scott Tennant, I studied with you obviously, lessons with Bruce, Adam, and I I mean I'm I'm always the student in this by my feel. And yeah. uh it's you know how when you're a student you sort of look up at the adults and, and they're off and they're they're chatting and it's it's a yeah. it's an interesting feeling for me. Yeah. Yeah. Let's keep going with this. Um, okay, so here's um, this one's good because Steve Robinson he gave me 19 photos. Wow. Yeah, he would have, he would have a lot. Yeah, he sure. would have a lot. So, all right, Elliot, I hope you're ready. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember those days. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of that's kind of Bruce the, with Tom, yeah. Yeah. And uh, again, for for some I, people who don't know, uh, Tom. This Tom it was at North Texas until just recently, just mm -hmm. by the time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what was Tom's last name? Sorry. Johnson. Johnson, right? Yeah. Oh, so did did he retire from Texas? Yeah, from just Texas? did just did finally. 
Yeah. Right, right. But, I mean, uh, Tom and Bruce, I know since 19, well, Bruce even from 1969 and Tom from 1970s when we met at Aspen. The famous, you know, the famous Tom story about, about, um, <laughs> he, Tom tells it better than anybody, but his famous story about, you know, Tom is like sort of this eager, eager young player and he wants to meet everybody and he's really friendly and he, you know, and he, 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 he his description of how he met me is, is so funny. I'm not even going to try and do it because, but it's it's just hysterical because I was like 14, 15 or something, you know. He, anyway, but his the famous time when he when he met Bruce and this guy comes down, you know, the elevator shoes, right, and these really colorful socks and his and his this white shirt like open practically to his navel, right, with his hairy chest sticking out, and 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 Tom says, "Oh, do you play guitar? Oh, let's play for each other." And he's like really super super friendly, and Bruce just looks him up and down and says. We'll hear each other soon enough in class. That's the, <laughs> that's the famous, that's the famous Bruce meets Tom story. We'll hear each other soon enough in class. You know, he could be very forbidding, you know, back then. Yeah. But uh, that soon, that soon dissolves. Yeah. Yeah. Let's keep going here. Wow. I, I don't know what this is. <laughs> that must be Jesus. That looks like Europe, doesn't it? Yeah. But it might not be. I don't know. I don't know where that is. Can't tell you. Look, there's an elevator over here in the, yeah. Yeah, I don't know where that might be. Adam Bruce, who's that? I don't know who's in with them. I don't know. I, I feel like I recognize that face. Yeah, I kind of do too, but I can't place it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's a nice shot of Adam too. There's Bruce. God, that's a that's Chris Parkening. Oh. And Roger Cope. I'm sorry. Who? Chris Parkening and Roger Cope. Roger was another Bruce dude. Mm -hmm. Who had this one? Steve Robinson. That's Chris for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And it's, and Roger Cope, who was a longtime Bruce student, who another guy from Florida. He was from Sarasota, Florida. And Roger's now out in California. <laughs> yeah, I remember Roger from those days. God. Wow. Bruce was so young there, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Oh, nice. That's a great one. Yep. That's a really great shot. Love that shot. Both of them. Yeah, it's great. I don't know where that might be. Looks like the West. Yep. Is that Steve Robinson? I can't tell. It. The caption says Steve. Uh, I'm going to assume it's Robinson. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's a really young Steve Robinson. Yeah. I can't recognize him without the mullet. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. The caption on this one says Bruce at 10. Bruce at 10, yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's a one hot summer in in Queens. Right. This one says Bruce Stetson, uh, 1994. Wow. Yeah. That's a beautiful shot. Mm -hmm. Bruce Stetson... Uh, 2002. Yeah. And the following year? Yeah. There he is. Yeah. And 2004 Ooh. with Zach Johnson. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Um, Zach was at NEC. We we overlapped for a while. Um, I mean, he must have been with David Leisner or something. Because he was never in my class. Oh, is that? That's possible. Yeah. Yeah. It was with David. Hmm. Remember him or, or it could have been with Bob Sullivan. I guess, but more likely David. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyways, um, let's see. Oh, wow. Ah, Bruce Mitchell. Oh, my God. Yeah. So this is also from Stetson. I guess it's that the guitar. Oh, orchestra. that's when we all play in the guitar orchestra there. Yeah. And, 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 and Steve's brother conducts. Bruce playing a Tom Humphrey guitar there. I can talk about the rest. Of wow. Classic, huh? Wow. He looks like uh, John Travolta. <laughs> There's a bit of the Paco de Lucia sort of. Yeah, also, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That's a beautiful shot. This one says, oops, did I mess up? No. This one says FSU Concert 1976. Yeah. That's the same time as I as that uh, shot with me. Mm -hmm. Who's the gentleman in the front? Michael Newman. Oh my God. Yeah, Michael Newman. Jeez. That's gotta that's gotta be though. 
it could even be before 1976. Who who put that date in, Steve? Uh, Steve Robinson did, yeah. Yeah, well, he would know. He would know. Yeah. Yep. This next one's pretty crazy. In a great way. Wedding. Yeah. With Adam, Steve, Mike Newman, Laura. Is that isn't that Lily or, or Mary Aikman in the front? That could be. I don't know her very well. There's Tom Humphrey in the back. <laughs> and I think that's Andrew Zone in the blue shirt on the left. Light blue shirt. It could be, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Oh, and and I, that that's Roger Cope uh, in the back row with the white hat. <laughs> and next to him is Ricardo Cobo. <gasps> oh. Yeah, and and speaking of Ricardo Cobo, the the I'll just do another shout out to uh, Classical Guitar Live because um, I was chatting with uh, Tony Morris and he said uh, he may have he may want to replay that episode where he did like the fiftieth year sort of anniversary of Bruce teaching, um, but but this time add on a eulogy, and uh, in that episode that I drew from where Adam was speaking, uh, Ricardo Cobo is another one of the guests. Um, let me read this properly. Um, in that same in, in, in that same episode, in, in addition to Adam Holzman quotes. Also, uh, interview excerpts with Ricardo Cobo, Laura Newman, Andrew Zone, and Jonathan Dotson. Yeah. Jonathan right. Dotson, I believe, placed in, in one of the Guitar Fest competitions in Boston. Okay. Yeah. That's Bruce's, Bruce's band, I guess. That must be him on the far right. Mm -hmm. uh, this one says, uh, the, <laughs> the caption in the photo says, Pineapple Duck. Okay. I don't know what that is. That yeah, Maybe that yeah. was the name of the group. I sure. Yeah. That's real 1960s. Okay, that's Ricardo Isnaola right in the middle next to Steve, next to him, then Bruce. Back row, I just see Adam and, uh, oh, and Nick Galusis in the back standing. I don't know who's next to Ricardo Isnaola though. Who is that? Uh, to, yeah, I, I'm not sure. In the, in the white shirt? No, yeah, in the white shirt in the front row sitting far yeah. left. For us, far sure. left. Mm -hmm. back, back, standing in the back is Nick Galusis and then Adam. Yeah. Then I'm not sure who the other two guys are back there. Yeah, Bruce and Steve. That looks like must that must have been Stetson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, right. The, the, they do have a white organ in the back of the stage, right? Yeah. Uh, I guess. Yeah. yeah. But Steve. Steve always looks like he's 14. There's. Really... <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> true. Amazing. Yeah. It's so perfect. Let's see. That's Lily Afshar and yeah. and Humphrey and Bruce. Oh wow! Incredible. Um, yeah. So yeah, those were some of the photos that uh, Steve Robinson shared. Very cool. Very cool. I'm doing this a little bit out of order, but uh, I wanted to I wanted to share this. It's it's kind of a random thing. Now, this is uh, I found this blog post. It's Samuel oh. L. Scheib, I think. Oops, yeah. did I mess up the share screen. No, I saw it. Oh, okay. There it is. Yeah. So the, the title of the blog is The Toughest Room Turns 50. <laughs> and um, uh, I to, to Shamnil Shaib, I did, I did try to fill out the contact form. I did try to track you down on Twitter and all that. So um, uh, I, I'm hoping I can it's use this. Must be a Bruce student. I'm not sure that I met him. Yeah. But anyways, I, I wanted to use this with permission. Uh, I tried to contact him. But anyways, there, there was a little bit that I, I did highlight here. And I sort of want to read this because, you know, as a student, this is sort of I, I believe I, I really identify with what he wrote here. So, here we go. Uh, I see that. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so I'll, I'll read it for the audience, um, and and I'll link to all of this in the in the description. So here he goes. Uh, Samuel Scheib writes: uh, Twenty five years of students had passed through this door, his door, by the time I walked in, and my audition was not over yet. Bruce described my tone, then pointed his finger at my guitar, like Adam at God on the Sistine Chapel. He spoke for hours. Your right hand is bouncing all over the place. Your left hand has no idea what the right hand is doing. You are completely undisciplined. Who taught you how to do this? It took me a moment to realize his question was not rhetorical. I pretty much taught myself, I replied. Well, he continued, at least you didn't waste any money on it. <laughs> Bruce has a pragmatic streak, uh, streak, and he has good news. He was admitting me to the School of Music. But anyways, uh, I'll link this in the description for, for anybody because, yeah. you know, again, as a student, everything that he wrote here is sort of spot on. Yeah. 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 Cool. yeah. And, um, you know, 
uh, I, as I continue digging around the internet, um, I wanted to share two interesting things. You know how how this sort of news reverberates. Yeah, it's an interesting thing to to see this kind of activity even on Reddit. You know these. I mean, you know, I, I don't I don't imagine Elliot you're using Reddit much, but a bunch no, of kids. I, you know, a bunch no, of kids. I, my, my students told me that there was just this unbelievable endless endless outpouring you know obviously. yeah yeah and then so there's reddit and uh in in the classical guitar subreddit and then also on this very classic site del camp also you know just just a lot of outpouring so yeah so yeah i'll, I'll link all of this in the description as well it's the same dime on steve lane estamos haciendo una, un homenaje a bruce yeah mm -hmm. yeah did you hear that? Hi, Steve. Uh, I did. I did. Did you want us to come say hi? <laughs> he loves you. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Um, and you know, it oh, as I was sort of trying to gather photos, you know, like I said, I emailed all these people, right? Uh, Andrew Zone, John Derby, Tony Morris, Scott Tennant. Uh, I, I I emailed a bunch more people too, who who said they just didn't have any photos. Yeah. You know, and a number of people we all know. Um, but the the response, even just sort of me preparing for this, has been quite yeah. incredible. Yeah. So Rubbish. even though uh, I never really studied with him any in you know, any formal sense, my love has been definitely touched by Bruce. Yeah. 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 No. We all feel that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the the festival will be dedicated to Bruce in some manner. No, not in some manner. Yeah. It definitely is. We're, 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 I know I, I, I'm, I don't want to speak out of, out of turn, but, um, we definitely, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I don't like to bother Mitch and Adam because they've been through such a tough time, but it will definitely be consulting with them on, you know, a way that we can make some kind of ongoing, you know, institutional tribute to him and everything, mm -hmm. you know gave an awful lot to our festival. I mean, he, he was making time for it when he had other opportunities to be elsewhere and maybe probably more remunerative opportunities elsewhere even, you know, than, than what we could offer. And he was just great. It was great, you know. Yeah. So there's to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Bruce, rest in peace. Yeah. 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 He's with us forever, as Adam said, you know, he's with us forever, so. Anyway. But yes, you gotta. You think about uh, you know, great work, great great moments in in history. You know when 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 Lincoln was at Gettysburg, and and you know he talks about uh, you know renewed devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. That's kind of how it feels, right? You know, and we have to renewed devotion to that cause for which he gave the last full measure of devotion you know and that's that's basically that's the path forward so yeah i mean i, I just so many mornings i would come to, i would do you know it was hard it was hard to get bruce on the phone you know, and and i would always make an appointment and i would say bruce bruce let's let, let's meet at five in the morning then right after you get done you know your first student or something like that <laughs> But no, seriously, I, I, I often did, you know, did, often did, did call him early in the morning. See, 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 I'll go to a door up, I think. Anyway, you yeah. know, so, yeah, we have to just keep going. That's it. So, but uh, it's great you found it. You found all this is very heartwarming for me, you know, just having known a lot of these people. I think with it, you know, when Steve was founding Stetson and really, um, turning it into something great. I was based in Europe. I just wasn't back here much. So like from, from the, I would say from the mid eighties for a good, really till the festival started, you know, I would, I would call Bruce once in a while, but I was, I was so much based in Europe in the, in the eighties, nineties, you know, I didn't really, didn't really come back to America pretty much till the millennium, you know, and, and, and then kind of, you know, started back as almost like an immigrant to America. <laughs> I remember I got back here. Then I was setting up my first, you know, home home phone at that time. You, just, you know, still had a landline. It's all you could have pretty much. Or, you know, cell phones were so new. And and I remember I got this 
I, I called up, I mean, last time I was in America, there was Bell Telephone, you know, and, and AT&T or something, you know, and, and now here's, I heard, I got this, this, this voice on the phone, you have reached Verizon. I thought, what the hell is Verizon? You know, I didn't even know what it was Verizon, but you know, I had, I was really like a, like a foreigner coming back. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, Elliot. So, right, well, fantastic, Steve. Yeah. Congratulations on on all this great work that you've done. It's, it's wonderful, and uh, hopefully, hopefully, our little chat will be fun for some other people to tune into. Right. Yeah. Thanks, Elliot. Stay in touch. Okay. Lots of love. It's great to see you. Absolutely. Right. All right. Take Bye, care. Elliot.